Hey guys, Chris Biddle from Light23 here. I just wanted to show you this latest art piece that I built, which I'm calling the Edge Lit 16. Um, the reason I chose to call it that is because it's made up of 16 edge lit acrylic panels, kind of arranged into this cubical shape that, uh, you know, allows me to display a 3D, sort of an abstract 3D image in there. And uh, of course, like every edge lit panel, I'm kind of uh, uh, lighting it from underneath um, with uh, a matrix of LEDs. And uh, the effect is turning out really nice, um, as you can see here. And I'm getting this uh, sort of illusion of motion and everything in there. So what I wanted to do was show you how I built this uh, built this piece. So um, just bear with me for another, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes or so. It should, uh, shouldn't take too long. To show you how I built this, uh, you might find it interesting and entertaining. So um, somewhat educational. So uh, enjoy. So the key to the uh, display piece working uh, is this uh, eight by eight uh, LED matrix. Um, and uh, it's a matrix of WS2812B LEDs that usually come in a long, you know, single row LED strip, uh, used a lot for decorative lighting around a room, that sort of thing. But it's taken that and it's just sort of chained it together in, in like a, a, an S shape like an elongated s shape so so the data will come in at one point and it'll feed through like this and then it'll come around here and feed through like this so it's like taking one of those ribbons and just uh collapsing it together into uh, uh into an s shape um going back and forth like that or i should say a zigzag not so much an s shape um and then the data comes out and it's connected to another one so anyway you end up uh, taking one of these and making one of these. So what you have on the other side is uh, a daisy chained, uh, these LED strips just daisy chained together, or I should say LED uh, panels. So um, it's driven by uh, a five volt power source, a DC power source. So the red wire is the uh, five volt power source. And then you got the ground uh, on the other side. And in the middle, you have the data. So there's only one data line that feeds into it. And, and then there's a data out at the end here. And so you just disc, you connect the data out to the data in on the next uh, matrix and the data just gets fed in. And then the, uh, the data out here, I just sort of clipped the wires and just uh, wrapped a little uh, electrical tape around it just to keep it insulated. Um, it also comes with a uh, an additional five volt power source where you can sort of boost the power. Um, and I didn't really need to boost the power. After a certain length, if you chain a lot of these matrices together, you do get um, a loss in power and the lights will start to dim. Um, since I'm only doing two of these LEDs, uh, two of these matrices, I don't need to worry about that. So all the power can just come from this one source here. So anyway, so I've took, taken this wire and just kind of wrapped it in electrical tape, uh, snipped it and wrapped it in electrical tape. So uh, this little block that I have here is just to uh, ensure that when I put it in the, uh, in the, uh, in the enclosure, uh, that uh, once I put the plywood on top of it, it just kind of keeps that matrix pressed against the bottom of the enclosure, or actually what would be the top of the enclosure, uh, which I'll show in a little bit. So uh, that's really the heart of the, uh, the element that lights up the display. Now the uh, circuitry for driving the display is um, fairly straightforward for anybody that might have done any work on uh, LEDs, um, especially with an Arduino. Uh, this one I'm driving with an Arduino Uno um, and uh, and driving uh, the data is coming out of pin number seven. So uh, basically I've got the, uh, the Arduino Uno here and uh, the data line uh, tied to pin seven. Uh, always make sure that you go through a resistor when you, uh, when you send data into the uh, WS2812Bs. Uh, it should be, uh, you know, about 220 ohms, 330 ohms, something like that. Um, 
and then it uh, connects uh, to the uh, that matrix that I showed you through the uh, the two uh, LED connectors, and the uh, I've got a five volt power supply that connects to the Arduino, and um, I'm actually using the power supply to power both the LEDs and also the Arduino Uno directly. Now, usually uh, an Arduino requires, on, on the VIN, it calls for a 7 to a 12 volts. I'm only putting in 5 volts uh, because I was actually too lazy to try to, you know, work with two different voltages. Uh, so I actually just tried to drive the Arduino with 5 volts, and it is working just fine. So um, I'm not going to try to step up the voltage uh, or I, I didn't try to step up the voltage to uh, 7 volts or anything, uh, the Arduino was still working fine at 5 volts. So I basically just took the Arduino and I connected uh, connected the 5-volt five, five power supply to it. Um, we do want to make sure that the voltage that's driving the LEDs, that the power that's driving the LEDs and the power that's driving the Arduino are... Uh, on a common ground. So you, you need to make sure that they're both on the same ground plane. You never want to drive the LEDs uh, from a separate power source uh, than from the Arduino without having the same ground uh, connected. So you want to make sure of that. Um, so that's essentially the circuitry and this is how uh, it physically looks here. Again, the Arduino here, and the five volt power source is this power jack, <clears throat> or is this just this barrel jack that I uh, um, soldered to the uh, to the wiring, and then just branching off from that power source, um, I'm driving the uh, the Arduino through uh, the VIN right here. There's there's a uh, there's the uh, there's the VIN right there, voltage in and the ground. And then the data line, uh, this is actually, so these are two input. And then this uh, one here is the data out from the Arduino. And it is going to the green wire that's going to the uh, data in into the uh, matrix. So that's how that's set up. And then uh, if I just connect the power to the barrel jack right here, um, you'll see this guy start to work. And uh, there we go. So the colors don't show up too well uh, on this matrix, but um, or on the video, but uh, uh, you'll have to take my word for it that um, you are seeing, I am seeing multiple colors uh, coming through there. Uh, you can sort of see the rainbow effect there. It's a lot more vivid when you just see it live, but um, anyway. Uh, so that's what's driving the display. So now let me just show you the construct of the display itself. So here is the base of the display. Um, it's just a piece of wood that I routed out, just a, a light piece of pine or dug fir um, that I just uh, I routed out these grooves on one side uh, in order to hold the uh, vertical uh, acrylic panels. And on the other side, I just uh, routed out this cavity uh, to drop the LED matrix in. So in other words, I just have it um, set up like this, and then I'll just take this matrix and just drop it in like that. And that's how it sits. And then uh, if you uh, flip it over, you'll see that the uh, LED lights um, are kind of peeking through the grooves, and so they shine through those grooves into the edges of the acrylic. Uh, so that's how that's constructed. And um, I tape the edges down, of course. Uh, 
I don't bother to like hot glue it or anything. You do have to make them uh, removable or you'd, you'd want to make it removable so that, uh, you know, in case a, a, an LED burns out or something, you can replace it easily. Um, and then once you put the uh, cover on it, a very simple plywood cover I just put together, uh, I can screw it on there. And uh, that's what I have for the base. So here is the base of the display in operation after my having secured the LED matrix to the uh, top of the inner cavity and screwing the cover back on. And as you can see, the LEDs are operating nicely and shining through there, uh, creating this nice effect. So now it's just a matter of uh, adding the uh, acrylic panels in there and having them uh, shine into the edges. I will be showing that shortly. So here is uh, one of the 16 acrylic panels that I engraved using my uh, Genmitsu uh, CNC router. Um, I just engraved the acrylic using a 1 16th inch uh, diameter uh, flat end mill bit and um, at a depth of uh, 0.1 millimeters and I just in, what I did was engrave these successive uh, diamond patterns, um, you know, getting wider in one direction and uh, narrower in the other as I went along each panel. Um, and so there's nothing really to say that you have to engrave the diamond or engrave these shapes. Um, you could use a uh, one of those uh, glass marker pens and uh, maybe uh, with opaque white or something and just uh, just mark the pattern on there with the marker pen uh, and you'll probably get just as nice an effect as if you were to engrave it. I just chose to engrave this because uh, I wanted the, uh, the pattern to be more permanent. Uh, of course, if you use a marker, then there's a chance the uh, pattern can get rubbed off, which could be a good thing because then you can reuse the, the acrylic for another pattern. Uh, either way, um, this is how I chose to do it, and uh, the effect is coming out pretty nice, um, as you will see shortly. So there you have it, the display powered up and running with all the uh, acrylic panels uh, put in its place. Um, you can see that there's just uh, infinite possibilities as far as uh, what sort of patterns you render in there. Um, what sort of designs you can engrave and uh, the kind of uh, lighting animations you could put in. Um, this is uh, all Arduino open source uh, technology and so the uh, it's just uh, you're limited just by your imagination as far as what sort of um, animations you could program into the Arduino. <clears throat> now there's nothing to say that you have to use an Arduino, right, to, to drive these LEDs. Um, you could drive it with a Raspberry Pi. Um, they even have these uh, little remote controlled uh, little LED drivers you can attach to these uh, LED ribbons uh, or these LED strips. Um, and so you could probably drive the uh, LEDs with those. Uh, the only thing with those with those little uh, those little prepackaged drivers uh, is that you don't have much uh, flexibility in what you program in. You know, you're kind of limited by what you uh, the the options that they give you, and they're tailored more for um, the uh, the long strip LEDs rather than these uh, matrices, but. Uh, you're certainly welcome to try whatever you wish in order to uh, drive these uh, LEDs. And um, the uh, possibilities are pretty limitless. So I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, hope to be able to post some more soon. Please uh, do feel free to share the uh, video with others and post comments. Would love to get your feedback on this and uh, subscribe to my channel. Uh, I would really appreciate that. Okay, well, take care. And thanks for watching.